Several million years ago, our ancestors' skin tone would not have been obvious. That's because early hominins were almost certainly cloaked in dark fur. But beneath the body hair, they probably had pale skin based on the fact that our evolutionary cousins, chimpanzees and gorillas, have light skin under dark fur today. Our ancestors eventually lost this fur and gained pigment in their skin. Although the exact timing and causes are debated. Many researchers agree that when humans lost their fur, it helped us stay cool while foraging as upright walking bipeds in the sunny, open habitats of equatorial Africa. The trade-off, however, was bare skin that was exposed to intense, year-round UV rays. Around 100,000 to 60,000 years ago, humans migrated out of Africa and dispersed to other regions in higher latitudes, where the intensity of UV radiation was lower. So, what happened in these regions? Were darker skins still advantageous from an evolutionary point of view? The answer is no. As in environments where the solar radiation intensity is low, a dark skin prevents UV radiation to penetrate into the skin, which is required to catalyze the synthesis of vitamin D. This is essential to promote a good mineralization of the bones and development of the skeleton. And insufficient levels of this vitamin can lead to serious health problems like rickets in children. Therefore, natural selection would have favored mutations that led to the lightening of the skin. Remarkably, the depigmentation process happened in Europe and in Asia independently. This is, provoked by different genetic mutations. Several genes and polymorphisms, variations in the genome, that are involved in the pigmentary process have been identified so far. But the human lineage did not remain exclusively in equatorial Africa. At different times, people ventured both north and south, to higher latitudes with less sunlight. That's when vitamin D became a problem. Like folate, this vitamin is important for evolutionary fitness. It facilitates absorption of calcium, necessary for healthy bones and immunity. Vitamin D can be made in the skin, but only when the process is initiated by certain wavelengths of UV rays. Away from the tropics, for most of the year, there is just not enough UV of the right wavelength for skin cells to form vitamin D. So, to get sufficient vitamin D year-round in high-latitude places, people have to rely on body stores built up during the summer months, or acquire the nutrient through foods, like fatty fish. But the darker your skin, the harder it is to maintain adequate vitamin D. In studies comparing dark and light-skinned residents of northern cities, paler people had higher vitamin D levels throughout the year. Their less pigmented skin led in more rays. A range of skin colors evolved at different times, in different populations, as humans spread across the globe. In addition to these genetic biological changes, groups have also developed cultural adaptations to deal with variable sunlight. For instance, we can consume diets rich in folate and vitamin D. We can also build shelters, wear clothing and slather sunscreen to block UV rays. Complexion has been shaped by conflicting demands from two essential vitamins, folate and vitamin D. Folate is destroyed by the sun's ultraviolet, UV, radiation. Whereas the skin kickstarts production of vitamin D after being exposed to those same rays. Hence, the balancing act, people must protect folate and produce vitamin D. So humans need a happy medium dosage of sun that satisfies both. While the intensity of UV rays is dictated by geography, the amount actually penetrating your skin depends on your degree of pigmentation, or skin color. However, pigmentation is a very complex trait, and there is still much to be done until we are capable of fully understanding the genetic basis of human skin pigmentation and making inferences about how can this have an impact on the susceptibility to different diseases or pathologies.